<laughs> I forgot to turn on this <laughs> countdown. <laughs> Hi, oh, everybody. <laughs> welcome to Ask Us Anything. We are. <laughs> That's because we, we were nice. having a big discussion about being vegan and not being vegan. Well, one of our followers sent me a link to a great book that is going to jumpstart my health, I hope. How many times you all, you regulars have heard that from me? <laughs> that, um, started today. So I'm going to undo all my past sins for... <laughs> and I have a house full of food that I think I will make a big care package for our children. But now I feel wicked like I'm trying to kill them after I watched the documentary <laughs> that we watched We did. Last we night. watched a really good documentary last night. Was, oh, my gosh. We can't eat any of that can't stuff eat anymore. anymore. You know, uh, whatever. Um, but I'm... Let's just give up eating. I think that's the only yeah, way that yeah. you know will work for yeah, a while. It'll work. In the, in the short we'll term, weight. it will work. Yes. Maybe, in the long term, maybe, who maybe cares? Maybe the body will learn to hang yeah. on to the air we breathe. I don't uh, know. I don't know. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, we are Mike and Jen, and we're coming to you from Southwest Michigan. It was cold. We were going to go out in the RV and do this uh, today, but it's like I didn't want to have to turn on the heat, and it's like 30, it was 33 degrees overnight, and it's I think it's still in the 40s, isn't it, out there someplace? It's refreshing. 40, it's 49. It's just starting to drop now. So, um, so we're back in the, in the studio today, trying a new microphone. We keep having the darndest trouble with microphones. I need to hire a sound engineer to come in and, and help us out. But anyway, it might be cheaper. It might be cheaper. The next microphone is $1,200. So I'm just warning you. Uh, so talk nice. There's, there's a mic right here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, welcome everybody. Then you can ask us questions. Hey, quick uh, programming note tomorrow. And by the way, tomorrow is Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Yes. And our viewers, I think, appreciate Earth Day more than most people because we are out in the earth, outside so much more. Um, but we're going to have a great uh, discussion at 7 o'clock on our new RV Lifestyle community, community.rvlifestyle.com. Uh, at 7 o'clock uh, in the electrical uh, space. And we will have a special guest from Battleborn Batteries. We're going to answer your questions about lithium batteries learn about lithium uh i think the prices have come down on a lot of lithium there's probably some sales going on uh this is a great time for people to think about upgrading their electrical system or adding more lithium uh what's involved in that how important is lithium do you really need it uh you bring them the hard questions and that will be at seven o'clock live on uh, the rv lifestyle community and you can find that in uh Right on, right below. So come join us tomorrow night. That will be a fun discussion. Now, this is where we discuss what you guys want to talk about, your comments and your questions, and let's um, get right to it. Uh, Robin Ostermeyer. Hello from Pennsylvania. If we travel to Skybridge, Michigan in mid-May, do you think we can be dewinterized? Also, is that a black fly time of year? Skybridge is a really cool thing up in northwestern Michigan. It's kind of over a little chasm, and and it's uh, it gives you great views. Uh, in Midway, you don't have to worry about winterizing. No, you can certainly dewinterize. Um, it might be cool. It might get into the upper 40s at night, mid 40s. But you know, you got a little heater you can put on. Um, and the black flies really don't start, uh, and they really aren't a factor in that part of Michigan in the northwestern part of the lower peninsula where the sky bridge is. They really are a bigger problem in, in the UP uh, near the Superior or Lake Michigan shore, but primarily the Superior shore. And that doesn't start until about the second week of June, uh, depending on how warm it gets. And that lasts usually until July, you know, maybe the, towards the end of July and that the black fly season is over. And that's not every day, that's only some days. To answer your question, May is a good month, and you'll have fine. You don't have to be winterized. It was cold last night, though, wasn't it? It was a bit chilly. I want to work in my yard, and I just am not quite ready. It was like to go out. And it go got out. down to like thirty-five here. I guess night. because there's a breeze. Yeah. Yep. But all right, James Massey. Good to see y'all. Uh, missed y'all last week. Perfect camping day in Texas. Come on down. Oh, J James, you have no idea. I would love to come down. Yeah. Um, you've been home now two weeks, and uh, that's about her limit. She wants to go someplace bad right now. Uh, Bobby Craven. Uh, hello, uh, Mike and Jen from Raccoon River Campground in Panama City Beach, Florida. 
pier fishing trip. Ooh. Oh, there's some great piers there. Actually, you need to go up and down the coast. You need to go from Panama City and then over to Okaloosa Island and fish the pier there. That's about 48 miles due west of you. And then about 20 miles west of you or 15 miles west of the Okaloosa Pier is the Navarre Beach Pier, which is the, at least I believe it is, the longest pier on the Gulf of Mexico. And um, then you've got uh, three great piers that you can fish all along that beautiful Emerald Coast. Yeah, but you will have spent a lot of time driving. Yeah, but it, the, the longest drive is from from Panama City Beach I'm to Destin. I'm and that's not it. bad. That's It's a great drive. So have some fun. Pure fishing is a lot of fun. Bradley Olson. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Loved your recent work on the Class B Vans. Would love to see <coughs> what you uh, come up with uh, reviewing the Class Cs and Class As if you can find the time. Well, we were working. We were really surprised, uh, Bradley, and the response of the, the our series that we just finished yesterday, uh, six parts we did on Class B Vans. And... Um, the response was amazing. We had well over a hundred and I think as of tonight, 105,000 views on those van videos. So yes, we'll continue, keep doing it as long as you guys are interested in that stuff. We are going to, I'm talking to some folks tomorrow about class C's and uh, class A's. We haven't done either of those in a long time. We've never really uh, reviewed class A's, so we may get a chance to do that. And we haven't reviewed any new Class Cs for quite a while. So we'll jump into that. We've owned a couple, three Class Cs, but it's been a while now. So we will get back uh, and we'll we'll let you know. We hope to work something out in the next uh, couple of days and have a plan for that as well. We had a lot of fun doing it. Oh, it, it was fun. And the response was awesome. Just awesome. So many of you were interested in it. And thank you all for watching it. And you, if you don't know what we're talking about, you can find that on our YouTube channel. And just go to youtube.com slash rv lifestyle i always see it. worry that maybe we're too casual <laughs> when we do these reviews well let's just say we are a little unique in our in our presentation we yeah, don't take ourselves yeah we kind of just talk about seriously. what we like what we didn't like and sometimes the funny part of it and if we don't know what we're talking about we kind of tell you that right up front and uh it's it's kind of a group uh group review and it's a lot of fun and Bo certainly gets his comments in too doesn't he He certainly does yeah uh chris mondo biondo hello rv lifestyle friends i am back at home base in wichita kansas after being in virginia the dc area for three months that's well, a long time well that's great i bet your wife amy's mighty happy to see that and i think chris we're hopefully going to see you and amy at our gathering in uh Indiana in uh, June. We've got a bunch of folks coming to Shipshawana, Indiana. And uh, while we're talking about it, that's our spring gathering in June, our fall gathering, we're right around the corner. We're less than two weeks out from being able to announce all the details on that. And uh, that will be in early October. And we'll give you all the details in a couple of, uh, couple of weeks about the fall gathering. So those are always fun. Jean Newman. Hello, where did you get the handle that expands for uh, getting in your RV? We would like to put one on our RV, and you should. It's called the Safety Rail, S-A-F-E-T-R-A-I-L, all one word, and it's from Moride, M-O-R-R-Y-D-E. It's listed on our Amazon Influencer page, and uh, if you go there, you can just search for Safety Rail. Um, and um, we have reported on that a couple of times. It's, I think, a must-have for any RV out there. Why fifth wheels and uh, some uh, of the bigger uh, Cs and As don't have them as standard? I don't know because they really. It is wonderful. Yep, yeah, it's called the safety rail. And again, look at our Amazon influencer page, and you can find that right there. Um, L. Westling, do you still have the Arcadia? We haven't had that for About a uh, year. A year. For a year now. Uh, Love that. Yeah, we but it's that gone. was our first fifth wheel, and we traded that in uh, in August, I think it was, for a Montana um, high country, and uh, we just loved that. It's the uh, three eleven RD Montana that we have, and that's our favorite. Uh, that's our favorite RV to date, actually. We enjoyed that very much. Are you fan? 
Hi all from central New Jersey, preparing for a month long trip to Kentucky, Arkansas and the Gulf Coast states in May. Sprinter class C and the Kia Soul Toad. Well, Sounds like you're you're ready. Yep. And let's see, when are you going in May? Mm -hmm. Perfect time for all those states. Mm -hmm. You'll enjoy it. Uh, have fun with that class C. And uh, and you got great. your car, so you're you're good. Yep. Good to have a toad because then yes. you don't have to break camp when you want to go someplace. Frugal Tracy is logged in with us tonight. Uh, just brought our eagle back home from storage a few hours ago. Shared pictures in the community this afternoon. Glad for the season to start here in South Dakota. That means spring is really coming. If uh, Tracy thinks that the uh, that the spring has started up there in South Dakota, it means we can all dewinterize now. <laughs> uh, great. We did see your, I saw your post on the community earlier today, and it was great. Tracy uh, is one of our most active members, and uh, she is also a guide on the community, and we um, appreciate her help with all of that and her uh, welcoming uh, touch to all of our newcomers. And the community is just great. If you haven't been a part of that, please come join tonight, community.rvlifestyle.com. It's a great place to get to know other RVers. I just wondered if you needed to, uh, if you needed more guides. Uh, we're good with the guides. Good? We're good with awesome. the guides. We got great guys. They do a good job. L. Wessling. I just booked uh, the Arcadia in July. She booked the Arcadia. Uh, you're talking about Acadia, not Acadia. Arcadia. Acadia National wanna... Park in Maine. Well, we will be, July. we will also be there in Maine, uh, but we're not staying at Acadia. We'll be spending a night or two, I think, in Rockford. And then we're off to our Maritimes uh, caravan with uh, Adventure our RV, uh, with uh, RV Adventures. And that should be a real, with Fantasy RV Tours. Gonna have a great adventure in the Maritimes. No, the Acadia, you have to book around it. Yeah, there, yeah. A, there are a couple of campgrounds there, but mm -hmm. yeah. oh, there are. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because so, I know we were there just for a short time. Yep, yep. We love Acadia National Park. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig, hi from Ann Arbor, where all the the uh, he thumbs wants up. thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up, thumbs <laughs> everybody up. thumbs Maybe up. Maybe the heart. You know, I don't know. I can get somebody to do something. Yeah, like balloons. Yeah, fireworks. I don't have this one set up. Oh, so I'm one. just being silly <laughs> you're just, here. You're just being silly. We have a. Uh, okay. Apple has this weird thing. They all come off. Jeff Newman. It's 57 and beautiful over here in Sleepy Hollows. Now, Jeff, it's not 57 because it's 49 over here in Kalamazoo, and you are only about 40 miles from me, so it can't be. It might have been 57 today, but it's got to be cool enough. We were hoping to have joined you there, uh, Jeff, this week, but we have some other duties that we have to attend to this week. But uh, he gave us, we've of all the state parks, mission, we've never been to that one. So it's, it's on our state list. state park, so we should yeah, get there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Big Jim Slade, Santa Claus, a.k.a. I enjoyed all six of the Class B videos. We were curious, though, what was the model that the uh, six video was filmed in where you summarized everything with Nick. That was the beyond rear bath model. And that was the one, if we were to ever buy a class B again, uh, at least I from what's on the market, that was the one of the ones we tested that we liked the best. Well, we tested one with a sofa bed in the back that we camped in. Yeah, we liked it, but, but, the, uh, but the one we shot that video in part six was the beyond with the rear bath. Yeah, I think Nick was trying to give me an interior that I liked, and he gave me the white interior that we camped in, but um, definitely that rear bath, because then you've got a vent in the bathroom. Only thing you didn't have in that one was you didn't have a sink, a, a, ba a sink in the bathroom. You didn't have a big um, You didn't have any kind big, of sink. Big fridge. You didn't have, a, you didn't big have a big fridge, and you didn't have a sink. You didn't have a sink. There was no sink in the bathroom. Wasn't even a was a there wasn't down. a pull down. There was no sink because we talked about. I said, "Well, I said, I guess when you brush your oh, teeth, that's you right. have to use the toilet." And it seems like everybody washes their hands in the kitchen sink anyway. Oh, no. But I was thinking about all this, and I'm you thinking, don't let me do that. <laughs> you say I can't wash them. Well, oh. I have soap and paper towels by the kitchen sink. Yeah, but yeah. You got to have a you got to have a sink in the bathroom. Away. Oh, well. okay. Well, then you. you guess well, then I'm glad we didn't get, get it. That one. <laughs> Inca Schultz. Comet Grand Design coming out with a Class C coming out this July. Really can't wait to see what they come up with. Yeah, they sent us a news release on that, and we haven't, of course, it's not available to see yet. So 
uh, as soon as it's available to see, we'll try and take a look. We're not that our... far from them. And uh, I think they're in uh, Middlebury or Goshen and we can, they're only a half hour or so away from us and we'd love to run down and take a look at it. Yeah, so. we can't wait to see yep. it ourselves. Yeah. So we will let you know, Inca. We'd love to see it. Mm -hmm. This is the first time Grand Design, they make great fifth wheels. And this is the first time they've gotten into a motorized RV with the Class C. So we're looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Bud Lenardi. Hello, Mike and Jen from sunny Arizona. I think I finally got my hydraulic issue corrected. Bud, Bud had some hydraulic issues that we were discussing in the troubleshooting space on our RV lifestyle community. And uh, I'm glad to see that uh, you got that working, Bud. Good for you, man. Mm -hmm. Glad it's there. Um, Ralph Price. Best campground near Nashville. The uh, KOA, Nashville North KOA. Best one. And now there are, I should take it back, there are a couple of RV, quote, resorts, which require you to stay two or three days. Uh, one of them even requires that you to be in, a, I think, a Class A. Um, others are very strict on how old your RV is. But overall, I think the best campground in Nashville is the KOA North. It's not far from the Grand Old Opry. It's, uh, and there are buses that pick up and deliver people downtown right from the campground. They got a nice pool. They got pickleball course. They've got uh, lots of really spaces, uh, sites, and they're really nice people. I was just going to say the people who run it will, you know, just do everything they can to make you happy. We hosted a gathering there this past fall and mm -hmm. took everybody to the Grand Ole Opry. We, we, and everybody wanted us to go right back there for our next gathering. Me. Yeah. You, but we had to spread it around the country so other people can, can make it. But, we probably will will do another gathering there, not this fall, but uh, sometime. We should next year because it'll be the hundredth yeah. anniversary of the Grand Old Opera. Yeah. So we need to yep. book that. Yep. Anyway, that's the one, Ralph. Bucket list travels. Okay. Uh, there is a sink in the bath in the rear bathroom. See, I hmm. told you that. There I have a... one, and it's one of the drop down sinks, See, like the Nova you tested. Right. So which one didn't have a sink? It was not that one, one. of them. And didn't I... have out of five. One of them didn't have a sink in the bathroom. Um, I don't know, but the one that the Nova or the um, the Beyond that we were just that we liked, which was the one with the rear bath, uh -huh. does have a sink. I okay. thought so. Okay, yep. thank you for correcting me then. I don't know which one didn't. I don't remember we were either. Talking about it. Yeah, there was one. There, there was, was one, one that didn't. And I just, and yeah, next, why are you spitting the sink in the kitchen sink? This doesn't sound right. <laughs> but, or the toilet, I guess, but they still got it. No, that's disgusting. Ed Richards from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Enjoyed the Class B review, but I'm going to keep my road trek. Uh, 2210 popular with all of the outside storage and big refrigerator. 2010. Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, that's the biggest surprise we had, Ed, is none of these class B's that we tested had any storage on the outside. No exterior storage, which well, they want you to get a box to put on the back. Well, that looks ugly. Uh, and it's another expense. And I, I don't understand why. They quit putting exterior storage on them. Um, that was a big deal, I thought. Well, I think a lot of people want to put the lithium batteries inside. And still, yeah, there's still water room. You can inside. still do that, but there was, I don't know. And I, so, Ed, I don't blame you. I'd keep the same thing too, because you do have a lot more. You can carry chairs in there. And, and it's, you know. Now, the road truck that we looked at had a big refrigerator. It was a white refrigerator. had a great refrigerator. refrigerator. Remember, it was an was Italian, Italian refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, an Italian refrigerator. And instead of being silver, it was white, but it did not have any. It, it was none of them, they were all limited in storage. None of them had of storage you. outside, and and we learned something about the uh, Winnebagos. With you fill up your water tank and then you're good to go. They don't use you don't city hook water. Up to city water on the on the Travado because they and got that weird wet bay at the back, and you can't. You have to have your door open if you're going to run a hose to the city hookup and leave it that way. Crazy. Uh, yeah, there. David Herman's asking that right now. Well, David, if you look at the video, you'll see all the Travado owners who answered our question about that. And for those of you who wonder what we're talking about, we really like the Travado, the Winnebago Travado. But what really freaked me out is the wet bay, which is at the very back of the machine, where the bathroom uh, is. You have to open the right rear door, and then you have access to the wet bay. But to run your, if you're going to hook up with city water and leave it hooked up at a campsite, site, which most people do. There's no mouse hole to run it up through. You have to 
put it in the door. And then if you're going to shut your door, you're going to cramp your hose. It was just really bad design. Well, all the Winnebago people, I said, because we said in the video, I said two or three times, maybe we're missing something. Tell us Winnebago. Where, how do you hook up city water when you're at a campground? And leave it hooked up. And everybody was, no, we don't even use city water. We just use the water pump, the fresh water, which defeats the purpose of being in a campground where you have a water hookup and maybe you want to take a long shower. Um, so that was, that's a, I think that's a big flaw in the, in the travel. Well, obviously people get used to it and they like it. Sure. It's a and if you want to go away, it's easier to yeah. leave. You don't have to unhook, yeah, you know, the water hose. Maybe you don't have to replace your hose listen, every takes, year. I don't know. You use a quick disconnect in the water hose and unconnect it. You just go like that. I think it's whatever you get used to. It is whatever you get used to. And, mm -hmm. and the Toronto is a really oh, nice it is unit. Oh, such a so, beautiful machine. So their owners say, you know, they just use They, they the don't have any problem with that. They use the fresh water tank and the and the water pump. Mm -hmm. But like when it's hot out, that water gets skunky. old. Yeah, it gets really rather skunky. Rather quickly. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of that at all. Chris Mondo Biondo. That KOA in Nashville North during my last visit said they had bought the campground right next door. Really? So now they'll be twice as big. Yeah. Those who stayed there probably didn't notice it, but right towards the south end of the park of the campground, there was um, kind of a big white gate and you really couldn't see it. But if you open that gate, it was another campground. So if they bought that, that means they're going to have a ton more space. It's a very nice campground and it's so perfectly located for Nashville. So glad. Thanks, Chris, for that info. Mm -hmm. Are you fan? Elm Hill Resort was very nice in Nashville yep. as well. It does require a few days stay. And that's the key that where they have the name resort on it. It's a, it's a little more upscale, upscale, and uh, they're a little more strict on older RVs and you got to stay multiple days. Uh, although, you know, most people do stay at least two days, but I think they're a three day minimum, I think there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is a nice part. I mean, where the KOA North, that's if you want to see Nashville and yeah, if get you, a bus service and go into the city and go, not drive, not have to worry about parking. And they do have sites that are paved. They do have paved sites. They have paved mm -hmm. sites, they have an old and a new section. But but yeah, that if you want to go tour Nashville, it's so easy because you set up your part. You don't have to drive into town. They have buses for 10 bucks, take you in and out. Pick you up, very simple, drop you right in the heart, just off Broadway, and uh, take you to the Grand Old Opry, to the Ryman Auditorium, to whatever you want. And uh, it, it, I just think that's a that's the only place we stay when we're in Nashville. Dave, 49. Love your shows. Welcome to the Volunteer State. Tennessee. Do you folks happen to know which Class B gets the best mile per gallon? And thanks. Probably the Dodge... Promasters, anything on the Dodge Promaster is probably going to get you a little better mileage um, than any of the others. Um, you know, if you have dualies, you're not going to get, you know, on some of the transits, the bigger transits have dualies. Uh, that's going to cut down on your mileage. So you want four tires. Um, the rear wheel drive models get the best mileage. Um, the smaller the RV, you know, uh, the better of the five of the five we tested, the Nova got the best mileage, which was two wheel drive, four wheels, Ram ProMaster chassis, 20 feet was its length. So it was pretty small. And that got, you know, 18 to 20 miles a gallon, uh, you know, which was pretty nice. Our first road trek, it got like uh, 20 to 22 miles per gallon. Yeah, yeah. And some of the diesels will get you really good mileage. Some of the, the, the sprinters. Uh, the Mercedes will get good, but you know, generally the smaller the 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 RV, you know, uh, four wheel drive uh, gets less mileage per gallon. Um, you can figure that all out yourself pretty good, but it isn't so much a model as it is the chassis, the drivetrain. Barbara Longue. We have the Midwest uh, Patriot, and there is uh, not outside storage. We just learn to make do with uh, less stuff when we travel. And that's that's good for most of the class Bs because you, usually you don't stay in, the, you're not camping for long periods of time, and you can get by with less because you're staying fewer, fewer days. Uh, I do miss the outside uh, storage <clears throat> that the Bs used to have, so... Well, what I like about our fifth wheel is that we, we have storage. <laughs> no, I, I'm not thinking storage. I'm thinking the grill. Oh, yeah. That we uh, 
and that's true of many of the larger things where you have an outside grill and yeah, an outside kitchen, the, outside fridge, and that's nice. But in, not in a, having to carry it, not having to carry it inside your rig. And our fifth wheel, we call that our condo on wheels because mm -hmm. it is, you know, it's got everything, you know, a small condo would have. It's really has been nice. And I do like a storage space, even though we have the, the small chairs that uh, fold up yeah. very small. I don't want chairs rattling around on the and, inside. And the fifth wheel has, you know, a big, huge pass-through area <laughs> where we can have uh, and lounge chairs and bigger chairs and and uh, so that's tools it. and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, the grill and the chairs. Satellites. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a lot of all my uh, ham gear, my ham antennas. <laughs> yeah. You, we we have too much stuff. Well, I but can, you do learn my drone. <laughs> yeah. That's what the bad thing is having. A lot of room you bring more and she says they get barbara gets over 20 miles a gallon in her sprinter mm -hmm. and that's the 22 foot then there's the 24 foot which is the one we tested the 24 foot extra length uh sprinter um bu bucket list travels they get yeah. 14 to 15 with the transit that's about what we got on mm -hmm. the beyond that we tried mm -hmm. yep so it's all standard pretty much yeah. jack partain even though my 2019 Travato has the city water hookup on the side instead of the rear, I've never used it once. No big deal. Well, that's what that's you great. say, Jack. But when you do use it and you take a long <clears> shower <throat> and you don't have to think about water going skunky in the freshwater tank, it's really nice to, I mean, uh, when we're at a campground that has city water, uh, we always look forward to that. We all, we do, we're really finicky about getting the freshwater tank empty is and not letting it sit there more than a couple of days because it does get skunky. Now the, the water, you, that's assuming that you have a hookup that's convenient. I mean, a drain, a sewer yeah. that you could hook up. You can take your long showers. You might have to drive out to empty in a it's, lot of different places. And it's, it's all about use. You know, if it's, if it's a short term trip, you know, that's great. And you, you know, if you can fill up that freshwater tank often, it's great. It, and if you don't mind the noise of the water pump, which isn't that bad. The Toronto, if I remember right, was very quiet. Yes. It what was, was the, the road trek was the one that was noisy. Oh well, my goodness. It was terrible. But the Travato was very quiet. So I can see why. You know, it's all what you get used to. Yeah, that is exactly it. And, uh, and it's, and with the class B, everything's a trade-off, you know, Bev Bender, she has a Thor rise, uh, 18 M and she gets 20 miles regularly. And that's on that pro master chassis, which mm -hmm. I just said was probably the, the best mileage we saw in all of them. Chris Mondo Biondo. Highway Interstate 40 perpetual potholes in, in Knoxville, uh, Nashville, and especially Memphis. I lost a car a dolly tire and broke one set of straps. Uh, tire treads everywhere. That's really sad. You know, you went right past our property and or the exit to our property. Uh, yeah, Knoxville is tough. Memphis, uh, I-40 is horrible in Memphis. Um, we are right between uh, Nashville and our exit is right between Nashville and, and, um, Memphis. and Memphis off of I-40. And the road, they did some, that stretch from Nashville to at least our exit is, um, is pretty good. They did some repairs last summer, last spring and last summer. And the road's in pretty good shape now. That is so frustrating when I you have. have that kind of damage and there's nothing you can do about it yeah. except say, please fix your roads. Hey, again, a quick reminder to uh, check out community.rvlifestyle.com. And uh, tomorrow night, seven o'clock, we'll have a live Q&A with a representative from Battleborn Batteries. We're going to talk about lithium batteries, what you need to know uh, in 2024. If you're thinking about upgrading or you have questions about what you need, how it would fit in your current system? Can you retrofit what you have? What do you need new? Um, how big are batteries now? What's the trend in them? Uh, all those questions that uh, so many people have about lithium batteries. Tomorrow night is your shot. So come by the community. It's at seven o'clock. And if you have never been on our community, we have about 25 different, we call them spaces. And you see them all listed on the left side when you go to the community. And those are different discussion areas about particular topics, you know, from boondocking to trip planning, traveling with pets, uh, people who are crafters on the road, uh, for sale by uh, by owner stuff, 
uh, lots of information. And we have an electrical area where we'll be talking about batteries and power systems. And that's live tomorrow night at seven. But we invite you, if you have not yet subscribed, come on over there. There's always kind of like an afterglow after we do one of these live uh, shows on Sunday night where a lot of people <coughs> will head over there and continue some of the discussions. And it's a warm, welcoming, friendly group. And we invite you to be a part of that community. It's all free. It's all free. All right. Um, Barbara Longaway, she's really enjoying the community. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you for saying so. Yeah. That encourages others, hopefully. Yeah, we appreciate that. Uh, 245 watching and uh, Jody says not only uh, 25 have given us thumbs up. Well, then come on, the rest of you 200 people, give us thumbs up, you know, click that little thumb thing. I think you can only do that on YouTube or maybe you can on others, but wherever it is, it's it's all there. Okay, um, <clears throat> we still are uh, fighting up our, there you go, Chris gave us a thumbs up. <coughs> What's the water? Nope. Yeah, I better take a sip. Right. Well, this is from Paul Bailey. While I drink your water, what does Paul say? Okay, retiring soon. Looking to relocate from New Jersey to somewhere out west. Done with snow. Plan to buy a truck camper. Uh, where is a good place to relocate for easy off-grid <coughs> RV adventures? Well, Depends great. What adventures you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, off-grid. I mean, you know, if you really want to have the most fun of that head out west arizona has uh and we have one of our podcast sponsors is a land development out, a company out in arizona that specializes in selling properties for rvers where you can camp and they're pretty reasonable you buy your own piece of property and you can then you can off grid as long as you want out there um so arizona you know is a great spot any place out west for long off-grid stuff uh, Tennessee, where we have our property, there's a couple of developments there that sell to RVs. It's very hard to find RV property outside of those two states. Now, there are people who sell lots in campgrounds and they're more seasonal and you're not allowed to stay the whole year in them. And you usually can, you know, they many of them will shut down for certain months. But um, to find unrestricted RV property that you can camp as long as you want, uh, is hard. And uh, that's the property we have in Tennessee. We've owned that now for going on two years and it's been, it's been a delight all the time. So, so you got to look around, but go on over to the community and look in our uh, RV property space there. We have discussions and people are always talking about that. So you'll get some ideas there, Paul, if you haven't already joined a Facebook user. Okay, Michael, remind everybody. I just did <laughs> about two minutes ago. Remind that uh, Battleborn session tomorrow is Eastern time. Yep, 7 p.m. Eastern daylight time. But mm -hmm. yes, yep, yep. That's, yep, that's a biggie because yep. Central, Eastern, Mountain. Yep, yep. 7 p.m. Eastern the different time. time zones. Martha Warren. Uh, we love the Chinook Bayside <clears throat> Twin Bed 360, which has lithium, solar, and no propane. Nick has one on his website, so I uh, guess he has one in stock. Yes, uh, I think he might have just sold that because when we were there, um, in fact, if you look in the, I think it would be part four of our series, you see us pull into a campground and right next to us is that very model Chinook. And it was bought by um, a couple of women from Florida, I believe. And... Uh, they were uh, testing it out and I got to help them a little bit with how stuff worked. And uh, I think they were spending a couple of nights there and they were in that very model, which is gorgeous. It's a really nice, the Chinook is very nice, it's expensive, but it's a very nice, uh, very nice RV. You mean you get what you pay for? Yes, that's the case. And, and people are always amazed how expensive class B's are, but they are. That's just the reality of it. Uh, Gene Newman just ordered the safety rail. Well, good. I'm you're glad gonna, you found you're that. You're going to be Gina. happy with it. Yep. I'm glad you ordered it. And there's there's where you can find that that we talked about. And the safety rail, it folds up flat against the wall uh, next to your door, but then you just open it up and it's like a railing that mm -hmm. you can hold on. You, you're the one who found that. And we've had it on both of our fifth wheels. Mm -hmm. First thing we bought wouldn't, uh, this wouldn't last Wouldn't have a big RV without that. Yeah, it is. Okay, we are about ready to uh, put an end to this. And uh, 
get moving on towards uh, uh, the rest of the week. We hope that you guys have had a great weekend. And uh, tomorrow is Earth Day. So um, get out there and breathe some air and enjoy it a little bit and uh, see if you can uh, find something to celebrate about Earth. I wonder how many people took advantage of the uh, national parks. On Monday? I don't, or on Saturday. It was, yeah, yeah, it was a free day. I don't know. I sure hope this a lot of This is National Park Week. Did. Yeah, it is. Many of the national parks tomorrow have Earth Day ceremonies as well. You can check it. Hey, so we'll uh, we'll see you next tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, on uh, the, the RV Lifestyle community. That's at community.rvlifestyle.com. We'll be over there later on tonight if you uh, want to chat us out. Another thing that's neat about our community is you can do chats. You can just write a chat to an individual member or you can set up a group. Uh, and uh, we try to respond to everything everybody asks us is on there. And uh, if you've not seen it, this is what RV communities online are supposed to be like. And we are very excited by ours. So come check it out. Thanks to Phyllis and Chris for uh, uh, herding all the cats tonight with the questions and the comments. Chris over on YouTube and uh, uh, Phyllis kind of running the, the siphon here to put the questions up on all the questions that came through. Thank you guys all so much for watching, and we hope you have a great week ahead. Um, we had a great uh, podcast coming Wednesday. We're going to talk about, um, I think one of the coolest stories out there is how the Love's Travel Centers are now building RV parks and campgrounds and incorporating RV campgrounds at their uh, Love Service Centers. We'll talk to uh, a Love's uh, guy about that and uh, tell you how many they plan to do in the future. And I think you find that interesting coming up on the RV podcast on Wednesday. And gonna, is it a secret? The one they're building close to a national to, park? To Yellowstone. They're building a full-fledged campground with 80, I think 81 different spots, which is great. And um, anyway, you can learn all about that on the podcast this week. So plus lots of stuff on the blog every day. And of course our community where the action is uh, fast and furious and always friendly and inviting. So we'll see you uh, in the week ahead. Happy trails. As you say, look, Oh, did I show everybody her shirt? <laughs> Jennifer's happy trail shirt. Yeah. My happy trail shirt reminded you to yes, say you happy can, trails. That's in our merch store. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you go. Thank you, Phyllis. RVlifestyle.com shop. And <laughs> you can, uh, you can pick up a, you too can own a happy trail shirt. <laughs> you too can own. Yes. All right. Tell so them goodbye. Happy trails. <laughs> Bye everybody.